Good evening. I want to welcome everyone to our uh, second installment of the District Advisory Committee with the focus in on our local control accountability plan. Um, tonight we'll be reviewing some important statistical and data reviews of our district's accomplishments and that will lead to a third meeting uh, coming soon in probably uh, May where we push forward uh, a draft to be analyzed and then passed on to the board for approval uh, this summer. And with that said, I'd like to introduce our Associate Superintendent, Mr. Thorsten Harrison, who will be presenting uh, the first presentation. Thank you, Dr. Nicholas. The information I'm presenting you today is about the local control accountability plan that we have for Lambertsville Unified School District. And each year, uh, we have the pleasure of going through all of our student data and our various plans that we have for the district and put it into an LCAP plan. The LCAP plan builds on the strengths of the district. It goes beyond test scores. It talks about, um, here we go. Uh, it talks about uh, money, equity, um, student outcomes, and how and where and when uh, we are spending money for our students and the types of programs we provide for our students. You may recall in a previous presentation, we talked about this infographic that is our district indicators that we're measuring when it comes to performance of our students across the school district. I wanted to point out that this infographic has a date of February of 2018 in the upper right hand corner. It's out of date. We've pulled it down off of our website. It will be updated and then uploaded to our website once it's updated um, with new data. Just wanted to make sure I pointed that out. The LCAP 8 state priorities are the basic conditions of learning, state standards, which is also a condition of learning, parental involvement, pupil engagement or outcomes, pupil achievement, school climate, course access, and then other pupil outcomes, such as survey results, club attendance, sports, things of that nature, uh, things that occur at the school sites that are not necessarily tied directly to curriculum. For Lammersville Unified School District, we established three goals, three LCAP goals. They are systematic closure of the opportunity gaps. And you'll notice underneath, underneath that it says priority one, two, four, and five, and eight. When you go back to these items, if you listed them one through eight, those are the conditions that apply or the priorities that apply to each of our LCAP goals. Goal number two is instruction and curriculum efficacy. And goal number three is 21st century outcomes and stakeholder communication. Goal one. Goal one applies to appropriate credentialed teachers, access to standards aligned instructional materials, well-maintained facilities, progress of our English learners, A to G completion, which is the completion of the requirements to attend a UC or CSU here in California, that's A to G requirements, and then other pupil outcomes. Goal two, goal two, instruction and curriculum efficacy applies to implementation of the state standards, suspension and expulsion rates, Programs and services for unduplicated pupils. Programs and services for students with exceptional needs. Goal three, 21st century outcomes and stakeholder communication. <clears throat> that goal applies to appropriately credentialed teachers, well-maintained facilities, parent input, and parental participation of students with exceptional needs. And when we say parental participation, we mean they attend uh, meetings, they have input, and uh, they have an active participation in a child's education. At our previous meeting, we had a draft version of this infographic. So I'm going to go through this infographic um, and just hit the highlights. When I'm finished going through the infographics and through my presentation, I'm going to go on to our district website. I'm going to show everybody where you can find these infographics. And if you want to take a closer look at them later on, you can, you can uh, do so. So goal one, I'm going to start up the top left corner. I'm going to read from left to right. 
You'll notice at the top of the infographic it says goal one, systematic closure of the opportunity gaps. Now you also see that it says pupil achievement. The four next to it applies to the priority. It's priority four. So let's start with priority four. The AP pass rate for our students is 58% of our, of our students pass the AP tests with a three or higher. Moving to the right, I'll stay in the blue section. 80% of our students in ELA and 43% in math meet the EAP standards. The EAP is an assessment that is embedded in the CASP test, which is the regular state testing that we do as a district. The EAP is an opportunity for students to uh, meet college entrance requirements where they don't have to take remedial classes or uh, complete assessments related to remediation. Uh, it also def uh, defines early readiness for college and career. Moving on to the green boxes, I'm going to go back down to the left, reading left to right. 48.7% of our high school students are A to G ready when they complete as a senior. Uh, that's the A to G readiness, the CSU UC requirements for students to complete in high school. Moving to the right, you'll notice that 63% of our students have a GPA of 3.0 or higher. Moving back down to the left in the red box, we have a 25% DF rate. What that means is 25% of our students in, at, at, this is at the high school, 25% of our students get a D or an F in the second semester of school at the high school. Moving to the right, this is our MAP scores. There's no error here. We double checked it three times because every time we look at it, we see 75 twice and that's kind of rare. But our ELA and math MAP scores are both at 75% of students meeting proficiency. Moving back down to the left, we have the DRA, which is an assessment that our K3 students take. 73% of our students are scoring at or above expectation when it comes to the DRA. Moving to the right, last but not least, you'll see our CASP scores. Our CASP scores for 17-18, 69% of our students scored proficient in ELA and 60% of our overall students scored proficient in math. At the bottom of the chart, you can see our enrollment by ethnicity broken down by K-8 and 9-12, if you're interested in looking at that. Moving to the right, you'll see it says state standards with a little two behind it. That's priority two, implementation of academic content and standards for all pupils, including ELs. For professional learning, we have the data there for our, our teachers attending professional learning. We have the LPAC assessment data, which 79% of the students uh, scored in the top two tiers for the LPAC assessment. And then underneath that, we have our, our curriculum, our English language arts, English language development, mathematics, next generation science standards, and social science curriculum are all being implemented at the school sites at a level of five. Now you may ask, it's a rubric from one to five. You'll note on there that science, and we talked about this last time, is a three. That's because we're in the process of looking at new materials for our science standards. So our self-assessment on the rubric was we gave ourselves a three. In all other core academic areas, we're at a five, which is full implementation of the curriculum. The second infographic covers goal two and goal three. You'll notice on the left side, we have Priority one, which is basic, so percent of students with standards aligned curriculum is 100%. Percent of facilities in good repair is 100%. And then in the middle, the number of missed assignments of our teachers is at zero. Moving down, you'll notice that in the parent volunteer section, we had 296 parent volunteers in 2016-17 and 213 parent volunteers in 2017 and 18. These are parent volunteers that come to the district office and um, meet with HR and do the full paperwork to volunteer in our classrooms or on our campuses with our students. 
One of the things that we look at in parent involvement are student or parent surveys. When we surveyed our parents, 73% of the parents think LUSD schools prepare students for academically, prepare students academically for success in life. And then the other data point, 77% of parents believe LUSD schools communicate effectively and timely. Moving down, we have school climate, which is priority six. And you'll note on the left side, we have the number of suspensions for the district for the school year. The school year is in the center. So you'll notice in 2014-15, we had 47 suspensions or 1.2% of our population with zero expulsions. In 2016-17, we had 187 suspensions and four expulsions. This data is from 2016-17. The discipline data is always a year behind all of the other data. At the bottom of that page, you can see our K-8 enrollment by student group in 9-12 and K-8. Moving to the right, 21st century outcomes and stakeholder communication. We have a 96% attendance rate, 8.5% chronic absenteeism rate, a 98% graduation rate, and we have a 0.5% dropout rate. Moving down to course access, which applies to um, indicator seven, we have our Canvas analytics. How many students have posted or received assignments on Canvas so we can kind of track our 21st century learning and how much uh, use we're getting out of Canvas? And then for advanced placements, 33% of our high school students are enrolled in the AP class. 27% of them are males and 38% of them are females. And then we have our early college participation. 9% of our sophomores, 6% of our juniors, and 7% of our seniors participate in the early college program at the high school. The early college program is a program where students can take college courses from San Joaquin Delta College while they are enrolled in high school, taking high school classes. By the end of four years, they can receive an AA degree and a high school diploma. In Indicator 8, other pupil outcomes, you'll see there that we have the ACT and the SAT scores. We compare ourselves to the state of California, and um, we significantly beat the state of California every time. So what's the LCAP timeline? You can see September through May, we take stakeholder input, which we do in a variety of ways. This very slideshow is given to the principals and every time they are in front of parents or the community, they take the opportunity to show the slideshow and talk to parents about our LCAP plan. January 2019, a new LCAP template will be coming out from the CDE. Um, that actually hasn't changed. It's going to be uh, the following year. So it's going to be a year from then. In May of 2019, the LCAP final review by DAC. And uh, we'll have an LCAP final review by DLAC. That date is to be determined. June 17th, LCAP first read by the board. June 19th will be the LCAP second read by the board. And then on June 24th, the adopted LCAP our local control accountability plan will be sent to the San Joaquin County Office of Education. One of the things that we do during the LCAP process is review budgets and what we do with budgets um, at the school district. This new budget overview process replaces the old budget summary. Components of LCAP thus subject to the same adoption, review, approval, and posting requirements. So as a part of this process, the monies that we receive for LCFF funding, local control funding formula, are all denoted in our LCAP plan. So it's all a part of the same plan. The narrative and the budgeted expenditures that are not in the LCAP may also be in that same document. In other words, monies from Title I, II, or III, which I'll talk about in a minute. So federal programs. The accountability for federal programs is the LCAP federal addendum template and the consolidated application. This includes Title I, Part A, which we receive, which improve, is designed to improve basic programs. Title II, Part A, which supports effective instruction. Title III, which supports English learners. Um, Title III, Immigrant, which 
supports immigrants, and Title V student support and academic enrichment, which is new this school year. So when you're looking at federal programs, Title I is designed to improve basic programs. It helps disadvantaged students meet state academic and performance standards. As a district, we receive $175,974. Title II is designed to support effective instruction. It strengthens our elementary and secondary schools by preparing teachers and recruiting teachers and basically improving our efficacy as educators. Our allocation for 2018-19 is $40,000 and $40,806. Title III money is designed to be used with English learners. Help, it's designed to help English learners uh, attain a mastery of language, um, thereby scoring better on the LPAC assessment. Uh, CalPads is how we collect the number. CalPads is how we report all of our student information. And our allocation is $53,901. Title II Immigrant is designed to enhance the in instruction and the opportunities for students that teach, for teachers that teach students that are immigrants. <clears throat> Oftentimes students uh, don't have access to the content or um, are behind and are having problems graduating. So Title II money can be used to help remediate that and or provide training for teachers to help migrants, immigrant students. Once again, it's collected through CalPads and our allocation is $15,053. Title IV is designed for student support and academic enrichment. It's another federal program that provides funding to improve conditions for student learning, improve technology, and improve academic content. We were allocated $12,087 this, this year. And then lastly, the consolidated application from the California Department of, of Education is a requisite for Every Student Succeeds Act, which is we refer to as ESSA. And the requirements are certificates of assurances, cash management reporting, and end of the year expenditure reports all to be done by the budget department in concert with the LCAP process. Thank you. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. There's a microphone right next to you. Thank you. Turning it on. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, my question is that um, I understand that there's uh, a percentage of students uh, in the Lannersville School District that are homeschooled. How do you, um, do you know what the percentages are of the kids that are homeschooled and, um, and how do we collect that data? I do not have the percentage of students that are homeschooled by homeschool programs, uh, but we could, we, we could access that data uh, through, through CalPads. It would always be the previous year's data, not necessarily where you are in time. But, but we could figure that out. Yeah, but I don't have that data at hand. And I guess what prompts that question is because uh, I can imagine that that in the LSD district is just absolutely fantastic and does wonderful jobs with the school kids. And somehow in the back of my mind, I think that uh, children who are homeschooled are missing the advantage of a quality education. And also, you know, Thank you. Any other questions or comment? Okay, so as promised, I'd like to show you on the website how you get to the infographics that are posted on, on our web space. You want to do it later? Well, the, um, on our homepage, oh, there's our homepage behind. So, so you go to our homepage right there and click on About LUSD. It'll pop up and then you just scroll over to Data Dashboard. One click and there they are. 
if you hover over any one of the items that I just discussed, uh, a summary will pop up giving you a little more description of what each data point is referring to. And as I said, we have goal one infographic and goal two and three infographic. And once we do our district-wide data update, we will have our district-wide infographic up as well. Okay? There we go. There it is. Thank you. Up next, oh, you have a question? No. Up next, we have Heather Sherburn. Good evening, everyone. So I have the pleasure tonight of sharing with you all the school accountability dashboard. Um, we have the California school dashboard as part of the LCFF uh, new funding situation. It's providing the school accountability uh, for that funding source. Last year, the dashboard looked like this picture here where they had lots of little trivial pursuit looking pies um, on it. And this year, the dashboard has changed to look like this with the um, <coughs> speedometer looking dashboards on it. So we'll walk through each one of these to tell you exactly what these indicators are. They're very much aligned with the indicators that Mr. Harrison was talking about. Um, and this is reflective of last year's um, data for the school year. So if we look at the first section to look at our achievement in the content areas, English language arts, you can see looking at that speedometer that overall we are at a status of green. So in the school dashboard, we're always looking at status and at change. So where are we at and are we moving the right direction or moving the wrong direction? Um, so overall, we are in English language arts at a status of green with 39.7 points above the standard or above what they would call the level three, which is the minimum level score for achieving proficiency. Furthermore, not only are we high in the green area, but we have increased by 3.2 points, so our change is moving in the positive direction. If we analyze that a little bit further, um, when you dig in, if you look at the equity report and it talks about which, how many groups you have that are in the various colors there, you can see we have two in orange, three in yellow, three in green, two in blue. And you can go in when you uh, are looking at this report live and analyze who those groups are and what it looks like. In general, what I can share with you is that homeless and students with disability continue to be the subpopulations that we need to focus on in Lammersville. American, African Americans saw slight gains in their achievement and English learners had gains of nearly eight points and achieved a status of green as well as the subpopulation, which is a really strong achievement, something that everybody typically struggles with is having their English learners achieve at the green level um, in English language arts. For the math area, we again had an overall status of green and we are 22.7 points above that standard or distance from three. And that's an increase of 10.3 points. So again, a change in the positive direction. The Hispanic students are the population that we're continuing to focus on and they are in the orange area. African Americans increased by 20.8 points and students with disabil disabilities increased by 3.3 points, so positive change. English learners, homeless, socioeconomically disadvantaged are all in the green and had positive increases. English learners had the largest gain of 10.8 points. And if you look at the third indicator there, the English learner progress, this is the first year that the LPAC assessment has been given. So we don't have an indicator to talk about status and change because we haven't had change. It's only one year of testing. However, we can look at what just the achievement is. And at this point, we have over 78% scoring moderately to well-developed, and most of those are in that well-developed area. So it's a strong start for us. In the last category on this screen, the college and career readiness summary, we ha again had an overall status of green at 53.5% prepared, including an increase of 3.5%. 
and we had a decline of 2% in the not prepared level. So that's positive gains in, on both sides of that. Those who are economically disadvantaged and white students are the population for focus in, in orange. Both of these also saw a slight decline. There's no status for the foster youth, homeless, African American, English learners, and a few other subpopulations because when the subpopulation group size is too small, they won't give you an overall status and change report. So the next area is to look at academic engagement, which involves the chronic absenteeism indicator and the graduation rate indicator, along with the local indicator, which is access to a broad course of study, and that is a self-measurement based on a rubric. So looking at the chronic absentee summary, this is a K-8 only category. Overall, we have a status of yellow with 8.4% chronically absent. And chronically absent is defined as a student who has 10% or more of the days of school missed. They were absent. Um, so that is still an area that we need to continue to focus on is increasing um, attendance. Students with disabilities, English learners, foster youth, Hispanic, homeless, uh, socioeconomically disadvantaged, and Filipinos have an orange status and have had increases, particularly um, the foster youth and the, the homeless. And then Altamont, Lammersville, and Wickland have a status of orange or red, and the others are green. So we have three school sites that we need to focus on a little bit more than the others. The graduation rate summary has a blue status overall, which is the highest status. In looking at where we need to improve, the white uh, population is our weakest subpopulation with 90.6% graduation rate, and they actually saw a decline of nearly 5%. The socioeconomically disadvantaged, Asian, Filipino, and Hispanics have statuses of green and blue, and there's no performance color for any other subpopulations because of the small size of the population. And lastly, our local, indi local indicator is MET. So in our last area of conditions and climate, we're looking at suspension rate and then the local indicators of basic teachers, instructional materials and facilities, parent engagement, and the local climate survey. In the suspension category, we have an overall status of green and we had a 1.3% decline in suspension, so it's positive movement. African American foster youth and students with disabilities have a status of yellow, so they continue to be an area that we want to look at, but all of them also had a decline in the number of suspensions, so they had positive change. On the local indicators, all three of those local indicators are met. So if you look at the overall dashboard again, the summary of it would say that we have strong status with nearly all of our indicators being green or blue. The English learners and African American populations had positive change in English language arts and math. In chronic absenteeism, it's an area of need for three of our K-8 schools. And the majority of change on the dashboard overall was very positive and we are moving the right direction. We had all local indicators at MET. Thank you. Are there any questions? All right, thank you very much. Okay, to uh, some Summize, so um, we had two presentations this evening. We had one which talked about our LCAP, which is a state mandated um, report that goes out annually. Um, and that's tied to the local control funding formula, which is the way the state of California funds public schools. And the second report um, is a more uh, granular look into the data being produced by our district tied to um, areas of priority uh, that Mr. Harrison rep, uh, referenced in his presentation um, with the state priorities and areas of concern that uh, school districts are expected to address. Um, other than that, we can talk uh, about the final steps to the LCAP approval process. The LCAP has uh, been in a constant tug of war between being an effective uh, communication tool at local school districts and a reporting mechanism about how uh, districts are spending state and federal dollars to the state. At present, the state's desire for a uh, funding report um, is overruling 
con clear and concise report uh, that this, the local school districts would like to do. Presently, our LCAP is how many pages, Mr. Harrison? 126. 126 pages. We would prefer a seven-page e executive summary that we could give out and then have the details for uh, the state in another format. Um, the state is uh, taking feedback, but at present, 128 pages and counting. So if there aren't any other questions, then I will um, conclude tonight's District Advisory Committee meeting. But are there any questions from our guests? All right, well, thank you very, uh, very much. We have a, a one in May coming uh, where we'll be uh, uh, looking at a draft of the LCAP itself. Thank you and have a good evening.